Fish, fish. Oh no, it's a coho. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, coho. Oh, there it came out. It broke you off? Yeah. Yeah, you were, you were forcing it. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to another adventure on the bite. Have you guys ever woken up in the morning and just had this feeling, this epiphany that you're gonna get a bunch of fish or a big fish or maybe the species you're after? Well, I woke up this morning feeling just that way. Um, I'm after my first winter steelhead of the season. Uh, Asher is as well, but I just feel like today's the day and I am not leaving this river until I get one. So right now, <clears throat> right now I'm fishing a bobber. He's up here casting a spinner. And right now I could think of a, a huge factor of why the spinner to me is funner to fish. I am making my way down this line right here. And in between me running this line, he's probably casted like five times. So his, his, his water coverage is night and day compared to mine. Oh! I was so worried my line was scuffed up. I'm sure that that was a rock and probably not a fish, but I should have known better after walking through the trees so much. One of the biggest things about spinner fishing is moving most of the uh most of the bites are going to come in the first five to ten casts and that's usually uh usually the case but like i said you can sit on a hole and cast it all you want and uh eventually you might stick one after you know we've done it multiple times where you're like man i've, I've cast in that spot like 20 different times and now finally that fish decided to take it um happens quite often but your majority of your catches on a spinner are gonna be in the first five to 10 casts. There's a fish. Is it a coho? It looks like a hoe, but it could be a, a, just a, a colored steelhead. Coming. Woo! He came right up here on the flat and smacked it. Nice little coho. Okay, I'm gonna walk down right here to get this fish landed. What a beautiful fish. Look at it right there in the water. Do you see that? It's just a little buck, but I'm going to hold the rod for a sec, Chris. Yeah. Check out this beautiful little buck coho salmon. Gorgeous fish. Look at these cool spots on the top. Got just cool colors. A little bit of red to the belly. Just a gorgeous little fish. I'm gonna get him into the water. Hopefully he's already spawned, but beautiful, beautiful little salmon. Send it on its way and try to get back into some steelhead. Here you go. Here you go. Well, you can still see it just cruising right there. Yee! It was such a beautiful day in the Pacific Northwest. Don't let that fair weather fool you. Our area was hit with a heavy, unusual snowstorm. Rivers rose and trees fell, leaving people without power and unable to leave their homes. But eventually, the storms dissipated and rivers cleared, returning us to the chase. And man, was it good to be back. There was no way we were gonna let what little snow was left keep us from the goal of getting a steelhead to the bank. Let me throw this jig in. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a little bit of what I got going on right now. Um, the go-to nightmare. This color right here is one of my top performing jigs ever. I mean, you only catch fish with what you fish with. That's just fact. But I tend to find that this color fishes better in all types of water. High water, low water, dark water, you know, you name it. And on mine, I have about on about 24 inches of 10 pound mono and that goes into my inline weight um, i actually thought i had beads with me but i usually i like to put a bead above this because it kind of guards the knot from the bobber slipping um, and i didn't have beads so i didn't have a bead above it either but 
generally I like the inline weight, the bead to bobber, to bead, to stop. But uh, mine is not set up as I normally would, but it still catches fish. So don't overthink it. The fish will come up to it. Another real cool trick, you guys, to throw in there is you got your bobber stop at the top. That stops your bobber from sliding up like that. If you stick another one underneath it, right down here by your weight, then if this does break off, if you break off your main line, your bobber will probably stop at that next yeah, bobber you save stop. save the good part. And, you, and yeah, and you'll save the good part. You'll save this bobber. Sometimes these little bobbers are as much as like $12, $15. So if you're running like a $15 float, yeah, lose losing that, that <laughs> sucks. Put a bobber stop underneath your bobber also, and that'll keep you from losing as many bobbers. Good tip. You heard it right there. There's the fish. There's the fish, boy. Yeah. Oh, Dude. We were pretty sure that two fit or two people just fished this hole. This is definitely a steely, bro. Nightmare jig. Come on, bud. Ooh, he's feisty. Nice little colored steelhead. Come on, bud. Ooh. He's pretty. He's been in the river for a minute. Beauty. Look at the coloration on that guy. I don't think you're done, bro. There he goes. Nice. Nice. Wild fish. Try to keep them wet as we can. What a beauty. Nice buck steelhead. Been in the river for a minute, a little color on him. He, he keeps acting like he's ready, but he ain't ready. Nice nightmare right in the beak. See if we can get him landed. Nice nightmare jig right in the nose. Just an epic little fish. Nice pin stripe. God, what a beautiful fish. Doesn't start out better than that right there. Uh, we're going to get him unhooked. Boom. Yeah, nice healthy release. The bite is on, boys. 